I just watched Wonder Woman for the first time, and I felt like she was the first female character in a long time who would say something like this. I'm going, Mother. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. If no one else will defend the world from Ares, then I must. Now, I'm not saying that there are no admirable women in cinema. There definitely are. I'm saying that when it comes to recent blockbusters and superhero movies, women are usually either supporting cast or not exactly role models. Wonder Woman isn't perfect, but she gets a lot right, which is why I want to talk about what her character does differently from the common female tropes that men and women alike can learn from. First off, from a character standpoint, we can't help but like Diana because she is enthusiastic. When she likes something, she is vocal about it. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> they don't, uh... Oh, baby! What do you think? It's wonderful. Yeah. You should be very proud. <laughs> this might seem like a small thing, but how many people do you know who truly have that kind of enthusiasm for life? My guess is not a lot, and it's because sometime around middle school, it becomes cool to be jaded and bored. It becomes a sign that you are cooler than whatever is happening around you. In fact, one of the big blockbusters of our time, Twilight, seems to have adopted this worldview, while all the other enthusiastic and fun characters can't seem to get enough of Bella's total boringness. You're, uh, Isabella, right? Just Bella. Yeah, hey, I'm, uh, I'm Mike. Newton. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, she's got a great spike, huh? Yes. I'm Jessica, by the way. Hey, you're from Arizona, right? Yeah. So you're enjoying the rain? <sighs> what? You're asking me about the weather? Yeah, I... I guess I am. Well, I don't really like the rain. Any cold, wet thing, I don't really... Don't buy it. Once middle school ends, we are drawn to people who have a passion for life, who get excited by the little things, not those people who are too cool to care. So if something is awesome, say so. In fact, the more that you can start to see the world as awesome, the happier you're going to be and the more easily you'll connect to the people around you. Second, Diana is a role model because she is an idealist. I'm the man who can. Yeah. And once I find and destroy Ares, the German armies will be freed from his influence and they will be good men again, and the world will be better. But this isn't just an ideal that Diana is mindlessly reciting. She actually lives it. She leaves her island and puts herself in harm's way in order to do what she thinks is right. Not only that, but she also pushes the other people around her to live up to their own code. As if they mean nothing? Where I come from, Diana. generals don't hide in their offices like cowards. That's enough. They fight alongside their soldiers. They die with that's, them on the battlefield. That's enough. You My should apologies. be ashamed. Diana inspires people to do what they know that they should. And when people are around someone who makes them their best self, they can't help but want more of that person. Which is why having high standards is one of the most attractive traits that you can develop, whether you're a man or a woman. And we actually talk about this in our John and Danny Game of Thrones breakdown, if you want to check that out. Go Going back to this though, Bella from Twilight, on the other hand, is obsessed with getting Edward to give in to temptation. It's like a drug to me. I like my own personal brand of heroin. And Bella doesn't tell Edward to do what he knows to be right. She tells him to do what he knows he shouldn't do, which constantly winds up getting herself and other people into needless, selfish trouble. Now, Wonder Woman does put her comrades in harm's way, but it's not for selfish reasons, it's for the greater good. And when it comes time to celebrate their victories, she makes sure that everyone is appreciated and included, even if their contribution wasn't as great as hers. Side note in these next clips, pay attention to Gal Gadot's eyes in these scenes, and throughout the entire Wonder Woman movie, she does a fantastic job of smiling from her eyes, which immediately opens people up. I've made other videos about this, which I will link to in the description. You did this. We did. Maybe you're better off without me, yeah? No, Charlie. Who will sing for us? Yeah. Oh, no, please. 
<laughs> this type of recognition is an important point to pause on because I sometimes see women interpret this to mean take no credit, diminish yourself, tell other people that they did it all and that your contribution was meager. That is not the goal. You simply want to make victories about us and we instead of I and me. Acknowledge people for their role. And the more specific that you can be, the better because it shows that you're just not blowing smoke. That is the foundation of a team and it's the hallmark of good leadership. Third, Diana doesn't arbitrarily listen to authority. She questions the rules. Here's what she says about scheduling your life according to time. Because it tells time. I want to eat, sleep, wake up, work. <laughs> you let this little thing tell you what to do. And here's what she says when Steve tells her that she can't do something. I can't let you do this. What I do is not up to you. It's important to point out that authority isn't always bad. Steve advising Diana not to murder someone at a dinner party was a fair stance. After all, Diana was wrong about Ludendorff being Ares, and she could have jeopardized the entire peace treaty with that level of violence. So the point is that there are limitations and rules in life, and they can do quite a bit to protect you and other people. But some rules hold you back. The point is not to resist authority at every level just because, like a petulant teenager, but to question the rules, to question authority understand the intention of the rules, and make up your own mind based on your values. It's not rejecting authority indiscriminately, but being thoughtful and selectively breaking the rules that makes a visionary leader. Lastly, we have to address Diana's relationship with men, because by the end of the movie, she winds up the leader of a band of four men who have all commented on how beautiful she is. Oh my goodness gracious. That's a work of art. I'm Diana. Where'd you find her? Miss Kenny, the whole point was to make her look less distracting. Yeah, really, Specs? Suddenly she's not the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. Now, we already mentioned that Diana does a great job of pushing these men to be their best and of acknowledging their successes, but I want to take a moment to comment on how she handles their advances. For instance, when Samir comes onto her, she calmly but firmly rebuffs him with her body language and then makes it clear that she knows what he wants and is not interested. Hi, Diana, you can call me Sammy, please. Sammy. Uh, Samir, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Tus ojos son tan suaves como tu sonrisa. Archie, ni de enchen casua, ni si ayashima. I have heard that this can be a difficult line for women to walk. Some women feel like it would be rude to say no and allow advances that they'd rather not receive. Other women feel like they need to cut off all the warmth that they initially would represent to prevent this type of thing from happening in the first place. And while I am no expert on this, it does seem like Diana's strategy of being kind and warm initially, firm with her body language, and decisive in her rebuffs is a really good one. But I have no experience in dealing with that kind of stuff, so take that advice with a large grain of salt. On the other hand, when Diana does begin to develop feelings for Steve, she doesn't simply play a passive role allowing things to happen around her. In the beginning, she teases him about being uncomfortable sleeping next to her. So you cannot sleep with me unless I, I marry I will, you. I'll sleep with you if you want. I'll sleep right there. There's I'll plenty sleep. of room. Then fine. If you don't mind, I'll go no, so I know. up to you. I'm just I, trying. I know it's up to me. I'm making the choice. I'll come sleep with you. Okay. And as they grow closer, she holds lingering eye contact with Steve before they finally share a room for the night. It's subtle, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but when I see Gal Gadot making those eyes, I feel like I am seeing her character take responsibility for making things happen between her and Steve, which is not a common trope in movies. The girl is always swept off her feet, surprised. Even in Twilight, where Bella's whole character revolves around the men that she is with, we hear her say things like this. I'm asking you to kiss me. Jacob's thoughts are pretty loud. I don't know what happened. The point being that Bella refuses to take responsibility for making a decision. She wants everyone to think, including herself, that she is just at the whim of raging hormones. And that's kind of the entire arc of Twilight. Bella can't make a decision. And even though it's subtle, I think that Gal Gadot's rendition of Wonder Woman isn't just pulling that somehow something happened card. She's making active choices about her love life. In addition, she likes Steve Trevor not just because of his scent or because he's a magical prince, but because of who he is. And why do you want to go back? I don't think want is the word. My father told me once he said, if you see something wrong happening in the world, you can either do nothing or you can do something. And I already tried nothing. 
And through the relationship, Diana is inspired to shift her values and make the ultimate choice in what she believes is right. They don't deserve our help. It's, 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 not, it's not about deserve. deserve it's not, maybe, maybe we don't. But, I'm, but it's not about that. It's about what you believe. They do not deserve your protection. It's not about deserve. So in Wonder Woman, we get a female lead who makes strong decisions. And she's not always right, but she is an agent of her own destiny. Whether she's choosing to stand up to authority, run into battle, or simply choosing who, if anyone, she wants to be with romantically. And if you take one thing from this video, let it be this. Rather than just letting things happen around you, make decisions and move. In fact, if there is something that you have been putting off, hoping that it would just happen for you, make the decision now. Ask the person out. Tell your team you appreciate them. Commit to one plan over another. Whatever it is, decide and do it. Things won't always turn out as planned, but in taking responsibility and ownership over your life, you make yourself a leader and a magnetic personality to boot. One more decision that I hope you make is the decision to subscribe to our channel. Again, it's easy to put these things off, but if becoming more charismatic and confident is important to you, subscribing will get you new videos like this every Monday and Thursday on your homepage. You can also join our email list for regular updates from me, including a free video on making an amazing first impression by clicking the button below. Whatever you decide, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.